So we're gonna begin this laboratory with the Burey uh, assay for protein. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to take our test tubes, which we've labeled up here, and we're gonna add one mil of water to each of these test tubes. So for that, I'm just gonna use our P1000 pipette dialed to 1000, brand new pipette tip. And we're simply just going to pipette in one mil. Now you could also do this using a serological pipette and a pipette aid. So I'm gonna show you how that's done, but let me first do the first five or six test tubes here where I'm gonna put my controls. I'll do that using a pipette. And then I'll come back and I'll show you how you can do that using a pipette aid. So to pipette the rest of them, I'm gonna use what's called a pipette aid. This is a pipette aid that is battery driven. If you actually press the top button, it will actually suck up liquid. If you press the bottom button, it will aspirate it out. So all I'm gonna do for these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tubes is I'm gonna suck up eight mils of water and then I'm simply gonna use my pipette gun to dispense the one mil into each one. The nice thing about the serological pipettes and pipette aids is that you can do multiple samples over and over again. So just to show you the last one, we've got one mil of water left. I'm simply gonna dispense it in there. And there you go. So what we have now is we've uh, established the beginning of our assay. We've got ourselves all of our test tubes and each test tube has one mil of water in it. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to add each of our juices. Let's start off by adding our positive controls. So I'm gonna take one mil of glucose, put it into the tube that I have labeled up glucose, eject my tip, get a new one, Go to the next positive control, which is gonna be sucrose, one mil of that. Put that into the tube. Eject the tip, get a new one, and keep going down the line with the rest of our positive controls. All right, having add one mil of the controls to the correctly labeled tubes, we're now gonna add one mil of our food juices. Uh, these juices have to be relatively dilute, so they are ground up in water, and then I add a little bit more water to make them more of a liquid. Done potato already, done apple already. We're now gonna add one mil of our onion. So again, we're gonna use our P1000 pipette set to 1000 microliters, and we're gonna suck up some of this uh, onion, one mil of the onion, put that into the correct test tube and then eject a tip, get a new tip, and we'll move on to things like one mil of milk. And this is just whole milk. New tip, the actual peanut smoothie. Into that. And then we'll move on to our unknowns. We've got unknown number one. Unknown number two. And unknown number three. So there we go. Let's take stock of what we've done so far. We've added one mil of water to each of these test tubes. We've added one mil of the correct uh, positive control and negative control to these test tubes. In this case, uh, the water is going to be our negative control. Uh, the egg whites are going to be our positive controls and the glucose, sucrose, and starch will probably be negative controls as well. And then we added one mil of our um, food juices to each of these test tubes. Now the next step is, is to actually add the assay reagent, which is the BRA reagent right here. There it is right there. And it is going to react with the amide groups of amino acids and turn a nice pink to purple color if proteins are present. We're gonna add one mil of this reagent to each one of our test tubes. And since I'm not going to touch any of the test tube, I am not gonna worry about changing out tips. So there's one mil going into our water tube. Okay, now you see how I touched the tube? If I'm worried about contamination, just get a new tip. Remember, when in doubt, throw the tip out. We're gonna move on to glucose. We're gonna move on to the rest of the line. 
Now you'll notice that our sugars aren't turning any color. They shouldn't. The starch, no color. Now here comes the moment of truth. This is the egg white. This contains all kinds of proteins. So it should turn a lovely purple. And let me lift that out so you can see. That color right there is a positive test for the presence of proteins. I'm gonna continue on down the line and add it to our food juices. So you don't need to watch that. I'll add it and then we'll go over each one. All right, let's see what we ended up with, guys. So we start off with our water, which is gonna be our negative control. And that should stay about the same color as the BRA reagent, and it does. I don't anticipate that glucose, sucrose, and starch would change any color. And if you look at it, they're still the original color of the water. So let me put all four of these together so you can actually see that they pretty well all look the same. Those are gonna be our negative results. But now I'm gonna compare water to egg whites. And again, look at that difference. No protein, protein. Now let's go down and look at our foods. So now we have our water and our potato. There seems to be a little bit of a purple tinge to the potato, so I would call that a positive. We're gonna compare uh, the water and apple. You'll notice that the water and the apple have two distinct colors. The apple really didn't turn any color. Onion and water. You can see here, onion and water. Again, not really a positive reaction there. But now let's take a look at this. Water and milk. Look at that big difference. That's a definite positive test. Water and peanut butter, there's the peanut butter. Looks just like the milk. Here's unknown number one. Looks just like the milk and egg whites. And here is unknown two and unknown three. So again, let's go back and take a look at water egg whites, and let's pick, pick milk. So there you go, our egg whites is gonna be our positive control, there's our milk. So you can see that they basically share the same color. Oh, you got our egg whites here, and take a look at peanut butter and unknown number one. Notice they all have the same color. So these are going to be positive results for protein. The more purple you get, uh, the more protein you have. So the more purple the color turns, the more peptide bonds between amino acids you have. So again, these results will be presented virtually on Canvas, but I wanted to see what, yeah, wanted you to see what they look like. We're now gonna move on to a test called the iodide test and the test called the Benedict's test. Iodide is gonna test for starches and Benedict's is gonna test for the presence of reducing sugars.